Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Here we go with Romans chapter 5, starting at verse 3 to 5. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which was given unto us. Amen. Now listen. What I want you to think about is one thing I can't stand. You know how there are certain scriptures you don't like to read because you know it means trouble. And none of us like trouble, do we? <laughs> yeah. Well, I really don't like that verse. <laughs> We glory in tribulations because tribulations work with patience. It's like, hey, I don't want tribulation to work my patience, okay? Because what tribulations really ends up working is my nerves, right? Well, one thing I have learned, the Lord brought to my memory. Years ago when I was young, I was in my mid-20s, mid to late 20s. And my father was in the hospital. And during the time he was in the hospital, I got saved. I gave my heart to the Lord and accepted Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior and was filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, one thing I knew, one of the biggest hurdles I knew I had to get past was my own level of selfishness. Now, I knew I needed the Holy Spirit's help for that. And let me tell you, God helped me. Oh, did he help me. When my father came home from the hospital, I took care of him. It was the last six or seven months of his life. I took care of him. Do you know the first two months I had to fight through my own selfishness? You know, sometimes we are so selfish, we don't even want anybody to call our name. We don't want to be needed for anything. Oh, what do you want? We struggle through that, don't we? Well, let me tell you how the Lord helped me. I had to continuously pray that God would get rid of my selfishness. And you know, sometimes when we ask God to get rid of something, he beats it out of us. <laughs> so what I ended up doing was I took care of my father. He was in a wheelchair at this point. I took care of my father. And then it got to the point where he couldn't get out of the wheelchair without a hydraulic lift. So we had to move in a hydraulic lift. Then, you know, that helped me get him in and out more safely. It's a mechanism. Then we had to get the chucks because he was becoming incontinent. It took so long to turn him over, get him into the, into the uh, swing, I forget the name, and then swing him over, connect it to the hydraulic lift, and lower him down onto the commode. And sometimes it would be coming out. <laughs> you know how that goes. So I had to go, I had to transition into the chucks. And then he had to wear kind of like homemade diapers, so to speak. Well, as a result of having to give up my social life, my freedom, my sources of entertainment, um, my ability to just come and go as I pleased, couldn't do that. I had a 24-hour patient in my hands. I had to take care of him. I wanted to. But there were times I wanted a break and I couldn't get one. So I say that to say, one of the things that that did for me and my father, we, there was a love that grew. You know how the Bible said, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. My father and I loved each other way more during that period. I mean, you talk about a feast of charity my father and I got so close during that time. Then when Christmas came, it was actually one of the most beautiful Christmases 
we had ever spent together. It was the most beautiful Christmas he and I spent together. And it was one of the most beautiful ones that I had spent, period. Because it was so full of love. We would just sit there and sing Christmas carols and harmonize with each other. And it, I mean, it was just such a beautiful, loving experience. Everything I had ever done wrong in my childhood, in my teenage period, and my young adulthood that may have hurt or disappointed him, I took the time to ask him to forgive me and explain to him where I was at, what I was dealing with. I mean, we reconciled so many things and we didn't really have a lot of differences, but I knew that I hadn't done him right all, all those years. And I had it was up to me to make that right. He didn't have anything to apologize for. He was a wonderful father. But I tell you, God taught me how to love outside of myself. And that's one of the things God will teach each and every one of us if we're willing. And sometimes there's a price to be paid for that lesson. But if we're willing to do whatever God wants us to do, we will rise above our own human level of living and giving of ourselves. We will move out of the realm of selfishness and move out of the realm of me, myself, and I. And what about me? 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 We'll move out of that because of the grace of God and our desire to change into the very thing God wants us to become. It's an experience, but it's worth it. So I just say to you, yeah, tribulation is a pain in the behind. I know. And I'm saying that real nicely right now. Because you know how we feel when it comes. But I tell you what, it will make you into something so beautiful if you cooperate with God all along the way. God bless you. And keep that in mind. That the next time your trial comes, you lean that much harder on God and his ability to pull you through. And you will find that when other people would be crying through what you're going through, you'll have moments of laughter. You will actually still be able to draw from your joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And God strengthens us for the battle. He enables. Uh, when I tell you he enables us, he really does. He doesn't leave us alone to grope around and figure it out on our own. But he really does empower us. You talk about empowerment. Empowerment comes from the Holy Spirit. I mean, he gives the ability. He gives us the grace. Anyway, God bless you. Be encouraged when your trial comes. Don't get discouraged. God is in that thing with you. You hear me? All right.